into um, um, cinema therapy yet, but next week we'll get into cinema therapy. Uh, this is from a book called Raising Humans in a Digital World by Graeber. Uh, so um, that's what the text. That's where the text came from. So here we go. Lots of inf in interesting information. If I can get it started, there we go. In the United States, nearly all kids age eight and under, uh, and under ninety-eight percent live in a home with some type of mobile device, and forty-two percent have their own tablets. Mobile devices for children in this age range tripled between 2011 and 2017 from only five minutes a day to 38 minutes per day, and one-third of their total screen time is spent using mobile devices. Uh, so what does this mean? Well, what this means is they're all, they're all on screens constantly. I, was, uh, I think I told you this last time. I was in the gym. <laughs> I was in the gym and I was in there with five other guys. Uh, we were lifting weights and there were five other guys in there and, and I'm just pumping away with, uh, I can't remember, dumbbells, I think. And in, anyway, I looked in the mirror and all, all four of the other guys were on their phones and I did three lifts before any of them got off their phones. They were all just on their phones. And I, they may have been programming music. I don't know. They may have been checking their emails. I don't know, but they were all on there for an extended length of time. Uh, even more striking is the 44% of children under the age of one year who use mobile devices every single day. By the age of two, that jumps up to 77%. You see evidence of this everywhere. Tiny heads been over the glowing screens of a smartphone or tablet. A modern malady never seen before outside of whiplash is text neck. The constant gravitational pull of a 10 to 12 pound head on the neck uh, can lead to the incremental loss of the curve of the spine, curvature of the spine. That's what it's supposed to look like. That's what it looks like if you're bent over a lot. So we're all going to have hunch, we're going to be all be hunchbacks in the future. Well, not me because I'm too old <laughs> and I don't use my phone. I, I don't even keep it with me most of the time. And I certainly don't take it into the gym. Mobile tools are excellent babysitters. In a 2014 study of children aged six months to four years in an urban low-income minority Philadelphia community revealed that almost all had access to devices that their parents used liberally as babysitters. When the parents did chores, 70%, to keep kids calm in public, 65%, during errands, 58%, and at bedtime, 28%. One specific type of stimulation uh, babies need uh, is a caregiver's loving gaze. The absence of stimuli delivered through facial expressions and eye contact can lead to disastrous consequences. What happens to an infant if parents spend more time gazing lovingly at their smartphones than at them? Babies may be less able to interact face-to-face, -face, less likely to form deep bonds, and less able to give or feel love. In 1975, Edward Tronick conducted the still face experiment. Mothers and their six-month-old are playing, and then the mothers suddenly make their facial expressions completely expressionless for three minutes. At first, the babies anxiously tried to reconnect with their mothers, but if she remained still, the child showed ever greater signs of confusion and distress before finally turning away, looking sad and hopeless. And this is part of the experiment. You can see how it works. You can imagine how that works. <clears throat> Experiments in 2015 found that the more, more TV a child watched between the ages of one and three, the greater the likelihood that the child would develop attention problems by age seven. For every hour of TV watch per day, risk of attention problems increased by almost 10%. We're talking about ADHD here, okay? Conversely, the more cognitive stimulation a child received before the age of three, reading, talking to adults, uh, the less likely they were to have attention problems. 
For children aged two and under, the effects of screens have been mostly negative, particularly regarding two important components of healthy development, language development and executive function. One study of children between 12 and 18 months tested video learning versus parental interaction. One group uh, watched DVDs containing 25 new words for four weeks. The other group had the words introduced in everyday speech by their parents. The children who learned the most words were the children taught by their parents. Another study with the same age group pit parents against a video of a series uh, of movements. The children instructed by their parents learned the routine better than those watching the video. This phenomenon has been dubbed the transfer deficit. Scientists feel that children under two don't have the symbolic thinking skills to understand that what's on the screen is a symbol of the real thing. And this is from a uh, size uh, video, Gangnam Style. One of the ten children, one in ten children between the ages of four and 17 years of age have been diagnosed with ADHD. And I think this is ten kids. So one of these kids is, has ADHD. I'm guessing it's him. He's the only one not smiling. The number of young children ages 2 to 5 with ADHD increased by more than 50% between 2007 and 2012. The percentage of children with an ADHD diagnosis continued to increase from 7.8% in 2003 to 9.5% in 2007 and to 11% in 2011-2012. Whoa! He's exploding. Research by Alderman assessing the viewing habits of 1,323 third, fourth, and fifth graders over 13 months found that children who spent more than two hours a day in front of a screen, gaming, or watching TV were 1.6 to 2.1 times more likely to have attention problems. When used intentionally and appropriately, technology and interactive media are effective tools to support learning and development. Intentional use requires early childhood educators to have information and resources regarding the nature of these tools and the implications of their use. Limitations on the use of responsible technology, limitations on the use of technology and media is important. Special considerations must be given to the use of technology with infants and toddlers. For children younger than 18 months, avoid use of screen media other than video chatting. Parents of children 18 to 24 months of age who want to introduce digital media should choose high quality programming and watch it with their children. For children ages two to five years, limit screen use to one hour per day of high quality programming. Be mindful of what young children need most, face-to-face uh, -face interaction with loving human beings. Look them in the eye. Set boundaries. Limit exposure for the uh, very youngest children. Turn off devices during mealtimes or one to two hours before bedtime. And make children's bedrooms media-free. Monitor use, behavior, and content. Block inappropriate content. Watch and play the video games your children are playing. Keep electronic media in public places. And talk to the parents of your children's friends about what their children do at their homes. Be clear about what is acceptable. Establish and enforce house rules about screen time. And don't let media interfere with family relationships which is kind of interesting because that's one of the reasons why uh, Amish people don't have electricity in their homes. Uh, they do have telephones, uh, but they have community telephones. Um, so they can communicate with people, but they, they feel that technology is taking away from family time. And they've felt this way for 150 years, which is why they still farm using horses 
Engage and lead for, by example. Obey your uh, own house rules and remember your children are watching. Relationships matter most. Use technology with young children begins with low-tech, high-touch opportunities for interactions, shared experiences, and joint engagement with media. Integrate technology use into social and emotional learning. Technology should be used in ways that support positive social interactions, mindfulness, creativity, and a sense of initiative. Use technology as a tool. Technology is an additional important tool for exploring, learning, and creating that you can put in children's hands. It is not more or less important than other tools children use to learn in early years, such as finger painting. Trust your instincts. Focus less on how many minutes a child engages with screen media and more on the quality of the content, the context for using media and the engagement level. Pay more attention to what the child is doing, not simply on how many minutes. Empower children to use technology as a tool for 20th century learning. It's here, it's, and there's nothing we can do about it. It's not going to go away. Uh, it's just going to become more intrusive. So uh, you, you need to allow them to uh, know that it's there and know how to use it. Select technology that encourages inquiry, exploration, discovery, documentation, and demonstration of what they know. Provide beneficial technology experiences. Offer media experiences that are engaging and interactive. Include positive interactions with others. Give the child control. And incite co-viewing and, and joint engagement with media. Make media use a language-rich experience. Narrate your own technology use. And when children are using the screen media, talk about what they're doing, ask questions, make comments, and offer suggestions about what they can do after the screen is turned off. Help children progress from just consuming media to creating it. Simple tools like digital camera cameras are powerful media creation tools when paired with a child's curiosity and creativity. Pay attention to your own technology use in front of your children. Children learn media habits and how and when to use technology by observing the important adults in their lives. Be a media mentor. Young children need trusted adults who are active and intentional media mentors and role models to guide them safely in the digital age. And that is it. So I'll talk to you again next week. We'll start cinema therapy next week.